All right, this is Joe and Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you coming at you from the backyard garden. And today's episode, I've got some problems, man. I got some bugs in my garden. Let me go ahead and show you guys. I don't know if you guys can see this okra plant here. It's pretty kind of close up, but we got ants running up and down the little stems of the plant here. And on the bottom of the leaves, if we look very closely, you can see all these little black dots. Man, these are like aphids sitting on the bottom of my leaves. And the, the ants are basically farming the aphid poop, which is sugar, which is food for them. And basically what happens is the aphids suck the lifeblood out of my okra so that it's not going to be as productive. Plus, I got all these pests, pesky ants everywhere that are kind of pissing me off. Now, this is the middle of the summertime, 100 plus degree weather. And you do not want to be spraying like any kind of water solution or watering your plants in the middle of the day because you will get leaf burn for sure. So normally I would treat this with like a neem oil and Dr. Bronner's Sal Sud Soap. I will post a link down below to the video where I explain how to do this. So this means that I could spray in the early morning or the late evening, you know, after the sun goes down and after it's cooler so that I will not damage the leaves. Now the problem is I always have something to do and I can't always spray in the early morning or the late evening. So instead of using my favorite Dr. Bronner's Sal Sud Soap and the neem oil, which is probably one of my favorite ways to control insects organically, I'm going to share with you guys another way that can be actually applied any time of day. And you could use this instead of or in conjunction with the neem and Dr. Bronner's. If you do want to use it in conjunction with, I would recommend always alternating. So do like one week, do the neem. Dr. Bronner's and then do this next one I'm going to show you and then do the neem and Dr. Bronner's and always rotate because insects may be immune to the neem and Dr. Bronner's, some of them, if you don't get it properly applied. But the one that I'm going to show you guys today, they will not grow any immunity to ever. So uh, actually let's go over, sit down and share with you guys this new organic pesticide that I'll be applying today. So the natural and organic product that I'll be using to control the insects this round is this stuff right here. It's actually called the Permaguard Crawling Insect Control and this is EPA registered and uh, basically what it is it's a uh, diatomaceous earth and what diatomaceous earth is basically it's the skeletal remains of some microscopic uh, sea creatures that lived thousands of years ago. So the skeletons of us are made out of calcium. The skeletons of the sea creatures are actually made of the silica. So it is this silica that actually does the pest control. And this, is, this works by a mechanical action. For example, the neem works, you know, basically just by being, a, being toxic to the pests. Where, and the pest may develop immunity to this. Whereas this works by mechanical action. So mechanical action, what I mean is simply this. Imagine if there was like uh, glass bottles, right? And they took the glass bottles and they broke them up into small pieces, right? And then they put you in a tank of the glass bottle shards and then rub that all over you and just rubbed it all over you, man. You just get cut and you would bleed red blood from the inside out until you had too much blood loss and you'd lose your life. So how the diatomaceous earth works, much like if we would bleed all our blood out, uh, this stuff actually basically works by dehydration. It basically cuts open the insect, it gets dehydrated because it cannot keep all its fluid inside and it loses its life. So much like we would never be immune probably to glass shards, the insects will never be immune to the diatomaceous earth, also abbreviated as DE. So this is the special diatomaceous earth that is EPA registered uh, for crawling insects, you know, whether you got aphids or whether you got ants and cockroaches, whether you got uh, problems with some spiders, I mean, this stuff will work on all those creatures. I mean, it's a, it's a wide, it works on a wide range of creatures. So this is really cool. I mean, just one product will do it all. And the cool thing about this stuff is it's not made in a factory, you know, made by any chemical company. This stuff is mined out of the earth. So the diatomaceous earth is basically uh, fossilized deposits of these diatoms or these creatures. And there's different kinds of diatoms. So not all diatomaceous earth harvested from different places are always equal because there are 
freshwater dive times and saltwater dive times. So the kind I recommend you guys get are the freshwater dive toms, which are right here, uh, because the properties will vary, uh, you know, depending on the source of the diatoms, if they're freshwater, saltwater, and where they're harvested from. So in diatomaceous earth, there are basically two kinds of silica. There's crystalline silica and amorphous silica. And in addition, the diatomaceous earth also contains up to like 20 other different trace minerals within it. And the thing you want to remember is that, that the silica, the amorphous silica is fairly non-toxic, whereas the crystalline silica you know, can cause silicosis and mess your lungs up and all this kind of stuff. So you want to make sure you get a uh, diatomaceous earth that has a lot of amorphous silica and not a lot of the crystalline silica. And the Permagard brand has high levels of the amorphous silica and low levels of the crystalline silica. So this I like a lot. So one of the cool things about the diatomaceous earth is that it is approved. It's a uh, OMRI certified for use in organic agriculture. You know, another thing I want to say is that not all diatomaceous earths are created equal. I mean, this is the brand I like the most, the Permagard brand. This is EPA registered for insects. And it says uh, silicon dioxide from diatomaceous earth, 85% other element oxides 10% moisture 5% total 100% here's another brand that I got actually at a local uh, hardware store and on this this is also the diatomaceous earth but it's only 77.69% and other ingredients 22.31% so you know when you guys buy the diatomaceous earth I would recommend you guys get a really pure kind such as the Permagard you know crawling insect control now I want you guys to be aware of this, uh, you know, that this uh, one here that's made for insects is exactly the same uh, in most cases as the one that is a food grade. Yes, this stuff is so safe, actually it's generally regarded as safe or has grass status with the FDA because this is used in some of your guys' foods. It can be used as an anti-caking agent in some foods. You know, it's often fed in animal husbandry to chickens and even to cats and dogs to deworm them. This is excellent to use if you're storing grain so that it keeps the bugs from getting in your grain and eating them. If this is mixed in with your grain, they're not gonna eat your grain. And if you eat some of this, it's probably not a super huge deal because they also actually put this in toothpastes. This is actually quite abrasive. In the past, it actually has been used for like to make a facial cleansers, to like do a little bit of scrubbing on you. Um, so I mean, yeah, this is the food grade. So the thing I'm trying to say is that the food grade and the crawling insect grade uh, are the same. So one of them may cost more than the other, depending on where you live and where you're buying it from. So uh, you know, I can't recommend that you guys use the food grade for insect purposes because it's not labeled as such. But you guys could do whatever you want to do, and I could tell you. I got a bunch of the food grade stuff I'm going to be using for insect purposes, you know, because it is less money. So this is the food grade stuff that I'm going to be using in my very garden. And now the thing to remember is that you're going to have to apply this stuff. And uh, let's see here. This stuff is actually like a white powder. Let me go ahead and show you guys that. Basically, it's a white powder. Now, you could eat this powder. It's food grade. It's not, while it is food grade, it doesn't, it isn't meant to be food and people feed it to their animals and whatnot. But... I don't know if you're really supposed to consume this, but from what I've read online, many people do consume it, and actually, it just tastes like you're eating some rock dust. <laughs> Not too bad, and yes, people do eat rock dust too for their minerals, so um, they say that, you know, in animals it helps with deworming and detoxification, and that may also be the same with us. I think I got an addiction to diatomaceous earth. I think some people have addictions to like cornstarch. Man, this stuff's kind of good. <laughs> but anyways, the thing is, um, it's non-toxic. You could eat it, but the problem is with any fine powdery substance, right? I don't want you guys to be breathing in any dust, whether that's a dust storm on the highway and our parent, my parents used to make me roll up the windows so we wouldn't breathe all the dust. You don't want to be breathing, breathing the rock dust. And in my opinion, you do not want to be breathing the diatomaceous earth dust either, although it is non-toxic you know I always want to encourage you guys to 
have your health as one of your greatest wealth and protect your health and protect you know any particulate diatomaceous earth dust rock dust anything from going in your lungs because that's probably not a good idea so put on a wet handkerchief or get a dust mask to apply this so what we could do is we could just take take this and sprinkle this over the plants because we just want to do a fine dusting what we're going to share with you guys next are some of the different uh, applicators or two different applicators that you can use to apply the uh, diatomaceous earth into your garden. So now I'm going to share with you guys uh, just uh, some of the methods to apply the diatomaceous earth. As you guys saw earlier, one of the ways is just to simply, you know, shake it over and try to get it like a fine dusting, you know, so that's one way. Another way is you could just get a standard uh, scoop. They have a special scoop here, uh, which is a sifting scoop that has holes in it. So you could actually put the material in here and just shake this out like this and then that'll make actually make a nice fine dusting so this is a really inexpensive in, uh, way to apply it if you have a smaller space the way that I'm going to choose to apply it is actually with this uh, tool right here actually it's called the uh, Dustin Miser so the Dustin Miser is a quality long lasting dust applicator so this can be used for something like diatomaceous earth or for applying sulfur if you have some challenges with the mold and I'm going to use this today to apply the diatomaceous earth. So let's go ahead and open this baby up and uh, get dusted. So there's a crank that needs to go on here. And uh, some screws. And this has a nice little funnel that you can direct to the angle you want to go. So I like this because this will allow you to get underneath the leaves. This is very important. If the diatomaceous earth is, does not get on the insect, then it's not going to work properly even if you apply it so you need to make sure that you liberally coat whatever you want to you know coat with the diatomaceous earth all right so we got this set let's put this uh thumb screw in there and uh i think we'll be all ready to dust so now that we got this guy all built really easy to assemble just a few screws you got to put in we're going to go ahead and open this top and this is where all the product goes in we're going to just go ahead and put in the diatomaceous earth trying to do it without making too much dust go around it actually does hold quite a bit of product here all right i think we're topped off right there I put on the top put on the cap now we're ready to dust so simply all we need to do is just turn this and look at that it makes a fine particulate so don't do this without a dust mask like i've just done be safe not sorry so now I'm going to be dustmizing my diatomaceous earth all over my garden, especially where these uh, aphids are at. I'm going to make sure I get good even coverage all over, you know, especially the bottom surfaces where most of the bugs are. So you guys saw me using this dust and miser to basically crop dust my crops with the diatomaceous earth. Now after using this for a little bit of time, I noticed fairly quickly that while this was dusting and it looked impressive on the camera, it was just simply not coating the leaves, you know, as much material as I would like. It seemed that it basically made it more airborne, so it didn't have a nice coating effect. And if your leaves are not getting coated, that means they're not going to be enough contact time with the bugs to do them in. So, you know, I don't know if I could recommend the Dustin Miser at this time to you guys. What I can tell you is that I got another um, applicator that'll work with the diatomaceous earth and it's the Gilmore um, applicator for just dusting plants flowers and gardens capacity one pound so we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull this guy out and uh, hopefully this guy works a little bit better here looks like we just got to put this end on right on this end and we're gonna unscrew this little deal hickey and uh, we're gonna fill it up and then we're gonna take our food grade Diatomaceous earth and filler on up. So this holds about one pound in here. All right so Like we got it full now. I just slide this baby back on. Let's see how this works This guy's working pretty good What you do is you pull this lever back cock it and then you basically dust it Instead of making it really fine particulate it actually puts a nice coating on there Almost looks like it's Christmas here in July <laughs> in my garden because I'm flocking with the diatomaceous earth. Yes, I would definitely recommend the Gilmore um, distributor. What do they call it? They call it the spray dock over that dusted miser, you know, for getting a nice, even and thicker coverage. So that'll be more effective for you guys. 
I'm gonna continue to dust my garden. So I got all done finishing, applying the diatomaceous earth in all the affected areas of my garden. It's worked very well and I could definitely only recommend this guy at this time, the Gilmore uh, Spray Dog. This one definitely worked better than the Dustin Miser. And the last thing I wanna let you guys know is that this uh, diatomaceous earth, man, I think this is really good stuff. Now, should this be your sole answer to all your pest problems, you know, in your garden organically? Well, you know, like in those vampire movies when, you know, they got like those the wooden stakes and the silver bullets and like some movies they try to like shoot the vampire with the silver bullet and he's immune and sometimes, you know, they put the stake in and then it still doesn't do nothing. You know, I kind of look at pest control kind of like them vampire movies, right? You got to have a whole bunch of different, you know, basically tools or weapons in your arsenal to fight the bad bugs in your garden so that you can get rid of them naturally and organically without chemicals because above all else I think it's very important not to spray toxic chemicals in your garden to be around your your pets your children's and more importantly I mean you guys are gonna eat these crops so we don't want to be spraying stuff that's maybe not so good for us and be ingesting it so you know what I mean this is food grade you saw me eat it if this is on my crops I don't wash it off enough I don't really care if it rains and then it washes in the soil, that's a good thing. It's probably going to actually enrich the soil. If your dog has fleas, you could rub it into your dog or cat and make sure, you know, the dog or cat's not going to be inhaling the part, the fine particulate. It's going to kill the fleas. You could sprinkle this stuff on your carpet, layer it in there, and then let it sit a while and then vacuum it up. That'll kill the flea eggs and the fleas in the carpet. I mean, this does even good for bed bugs, man. I mean, just put it in your mattress and stuff. Man, I mean, there's so many different uses for the diatomaceous earth and bugs will never be immune to it. As long as you apply it properly and get a good coverage so that it comes in contact with the bugs, it will work and it will be effective. That being said, I always encourage you guys to add, you know, tools to your arsenal and not just have one tool that you depend on because if this guy doesn't work, I want you to have other options. So be sure to check that link below in the video where I use the Neem and Dr. Bronner's soap I do like that combination a lot. This tends to get pretty dusty. I'm kind of dusty today. I wore a white shirt, so you can't really see how dusty I'm in, but if I wore a black shirt, I'd probably be covered in the diatomaceous earth dust. And once again, remember to wear a respirator. But yeah, diatomaceous earth, definitely one of my uh, favorite products to fight pests in your garden organically. Wow, man, I gotta let you guys know this experience. So like, down beneath, uh, you know, where I walk into my uh, place, uh, like there's a big like ant path like it was really bad it was like you know I don't know think highway 101 or one of them big ass highways in LA you know with like 10 car lanes each direction maybe 405 down by like Fountain Valley I mean that thing's wide right this is like a multi-lane highway for ants I've been having some ant challenges in the house and plenty of them also in the garden but literally I sprayed down this um diatomaceous earth dust and like the super highway of ants are like a city street I'm not gonna say they've completely disappeared I'm gonna say I see right now one two three like four maybe five ants now and it was like super highway city dude so if you got ant problems you know things like that you want to keep them out of your house you know definitely put down the diatomaceous earth and it's definitely worked for me and I'm confident it'll work for you too. So one of the challenges I've had here in the desert is cockroaches or la cockarocha. La cockarocha, la cockaracha. Wait, that's a different song. Anyways, I've had challenges with cockroaches and I see sometimes at night when I come out to harvest some food, I see cockroaches on my plants. Kind of gives me the eebie-jeebies. And you know, cockroaches are pretty dang like, I don't know, they're hard to get rid of. They say if there's World War III, the cockroaches will still be around, but we won't. But one of the things that will get rid of the cockroaches, I'm proud to say, is the diatomaceous earth. So inside these irrigation control boxes, that's where usually the cockroaches hang out. So I'm going to take these guys off. Oh man, they're all in there. And I'm dusting them with the diatomaceous earth. Oh yeah. And I see them covered in the diatomaceous earth. Let's go ahead and give you guys a close up on that. All right. There we go, man. There's the cockroaches, man. You see them moving in there? They're all coated in the diatomaceous earth. And now they're gonna croak. So now I wanna share with you guys actually where to get the diatomaceous earth. You know, it's very important that you get a good quality diatomaceous earth. As you guys saw earlier in the episode, 
you know, I had uh, this stuff here, the Safer brand, and this was just available local to me. If you go into most stores and ask for Diatomaceous Earth, they may have a brand like this, or they may not have it at all. But what you do not want to do is you do not want to go to like a Walmart or a Home Depot or a Lowe's and say, do you guys have Diatomaceous Earth? They'll say, yes, we do. And they'll send you over to the pool section. And I made this air before once. In the pool section, they have Diatomaceous Earth labeled for filtering for pools, for use in swimming pools. Now, this is not the same Diatomaceous Earth that I'm showing you guys today. The Diatomaceous Earth for swimming pools actually has been highly processed and heated at high temperatures so that it loses its effectiveness to do what we want it to do as gardeners. And so I do not recommend pool Diatomaceous Earth for this use. It will not work and you'll be wasting your money and uh, I don't recommend it. And what I did when I was a lot younger is that I found out that Diatomaceous Earth was also good for flea control and I moved into a friend's place actually that had fleas so I got a bunch of the pool grade Diatomaceous Earth spread it all over the carpet and vacuumed it up and uh, we still had flea problems because I'd, I'd wake up every morning with all bites near my ankles which man that really sucked because I didn't get the right Diatomaceous Earth because back in the day it was a lot harder to find and actually even today still it is it is actually quite uncommon most garden centers may not carry this product or they'll carry a brand maybe like a lesser brand that's not as pure you know, I always want to recommend you guys get, you know, get the food grade stuff. Whether you're going to use it for insect control, even though it's not labeled as such, you can do that <laughs> as a right. Um, and you could also use it to preserve your food and to feed to your, your animals, give your pets, and even mix it in with your dog food. I'm going to start doing that. I believe that's going to be a good thing. And yeah, get the food grade stuff. That's going to be the best source. And if you guys want to get the... Uh, a good price. I've used this company here. It's called the uh, DiatomaceousEarth.com. It's D-I-A-T-O-M-A-C-E-O-U-S Earth.com to get this Diatomaceous Earth you're seeing here. And I've negotiated special pricing for you guys. Um, and if you use a discount code GYG, you get a special discount on their stuff. Plus, furthermore, the thing I like about them is that they will offer you and give you guys free shipping on any order over $75. In addition, because you're one of my viewers, if you use the discount code GYG, they'll also automatically include a dusk mass, uh, you know, with your Diatomaceous Earth order because it is that important to me that you guys protect your health and especially any particulate, you know, going into your nose. So that's really cool that they're going to do that. And this is the company I use to get my DE. This is the company I recommend. It's definitely the pure stuff. I have no problem eating it or spraying it on my crops as you guys saw. Um, be sure to stay tuned for future updates where I show you guys how this DE worked. And the final thing I wanna say about the DE is that the DE is very high in silica. Silica is very important you know, for us, like it makes your nails strong and your hair strong, so it could be good for us. And so the other thing I'm doing with the diatomaceous earth is actually I'm putting it in my soil mixture. This will add the silica into the soil you know, literally the backbone of the plants that you're seeing behind me here is silica, and it's something that, in my opinion, uh, can be missing from the soils of today. While the azomite rock does has high levels of silica, you know, I don't think it's a problem adding in a little bit more silica in the form of diatomaceous earth. Also, the diatomaceous earth does have water holding capabilities. So yeah, so besides spraying it on uh, for pest control, and besides, you know, putting it in the soil, you could actually also dust it on top of the soil to help prevent the creepy crawly insects. You know, um, I've also have used it to rub into my animals, like dog or cat's fur, to get rid of flea problems and make sure they do not breathe in the fine particulate dust either when applying it would be my recommendations. And other gardeners and people I know actually use this for, um, for smell control so like when chickens go to the bathroom they just spray all this stuff down or to keep the flies down in the horse stalls they just put a whole bunch of this stuff down and that seems to help as well from what I've heard but yeah that's Mesa's Earth one of my favorite natural organic ingredients to not only control pests but also do so many other things around your home garden and I think it might be quite beneficial to look into and get some you know I've have some as you guys saw I have some cockroach problems and it's worked on the cockroach problems and I'm also going to be using it on uh, some of these ants I got hanging around here as well. Uh, yeah, Diatomaceous Earth, one of the seven wonders of the world. 
in my simple opinion, especially for organic gardeners. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowInYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowInYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I'm on yet another field trip, and I'm glad to be on this field trip because for those of you guys that are long-term viewers,